All right, Team Facebook, Hunter Lewis here with Cooking Light, and today we're going to be talking about one of the most fundamental things that you need to know how to do in the home kitchen, and that's salt, and that's seasoning with salt. So what separates the home cook from a restaurant cook? It's knowing how to season. Uh, this is the most important thing that you should learn as a home cook, and today we're going to walk through some of the basics, and we're going to talk about the three salts that you should have in your kitchen. Okay, the first, kosher salt. Kosher salt is our everyday salt at Cooking Light. Um, this is what I use at home, and there are two kinds of kosher salt you should have in your pantry. Morton kosher salt. This is really coarse. We use Morton for cleaning, and I'm gonna show you why. Diamond crystal, this is a little bit finer. We use this every day in our food, and I'm gonna show you why. Okay, so Morton, um, it's got a really, really coarse crystal see it down here um, and we use this to scour cast iron we use it as a clean aid cleaning agent um, it's a fundamental thing in our pantry um, look at the sprinkleability of the diamond crystal you can see how fine it is the crystals are really even and this is why we like having uh, diamond crystal using it for food I keep mine at home and this little stout uh, this is my salt cellar and you kind of see when we talk about sprinkleability that's why diamond crystal is so good. Nice and fine and even. All right, so these are the two kosher salts you need in your kitchen. Um, I get mine in these little cylinders. One trick I wanted to show you, my grandfather showed me this. He was a depression, I grew up in a depression and um, when he wanted to get the last few bits of salt out of his container, uh, you can't get it out of the nozzle. So he just takes a serrated knife cuts the corner and that's how he gets his stuff, his salt out of the, the box, those last few stubborn teaspoons full. Okay, so time to get cooking. Kosher salt. When we are seasoning chicken or fish or steak in this case, the way to season is not to come over the surface of it from down here. You want to season up high. So the way that we season up high, grab a little pinch. Now, I know this seems really basic, but it's really important too. This is going to give you more even coverage, which is going to give you more even flavor, and every bite is going to be perfectly coated with the kosher salt. And you see the way that this diamond crystal covers the surface of the steak. Same goes for chicken, same goes for fish, same goes for vegetables. We're going to get the other side. So if you're just joining us today, we are here to talk about how to season and how to season properly. It's the most fundamental thing you can do in the home kitchen. Okay, so steak season, we'll work on that a little bit later. The next thing we're gonna do with kosher salt is to use it um, to break down garlic. It's gonna go into a dressing, okay? So I've got a garlic clove, smashed, skin off, take this little nub off. And I'm just gonna start chopping the garlic and I'm gonna use some kosher salt to help make a paste. And the kosher salt's gonna help break it down into finer bits. And the paste is gonna make, uh, it's gonna be even more pungent than even a, um, a minced garlic would be. So at this point, see I've got it uh, sort of coarsely chopped. That's where I'm gonna take the kosher salt, put it on the board. This is gonna help you break down even more. And the salt's also going to uh, start drawing some of the moisture out of the cell walls of the garlic, which is gonna make it even more pungent. And we're gonna use this garlic as the base of our vinaigrette. Okay, a little bit more. So now is where we, we smash and we scrape, okay? We can do that a few more times. What does this do exactly to the garlic flavor? So this makes it even more pungent and even stronger. Um, so the finer the garlic is broken down, the more garlic flavor you're gonna have. And so this is gonna go into a dressing. So when we do uh, garlic and marinades or dressings, 
you want the paste, and the salt's gonna help you break down uh, the garlic into the paste. You want that paste for finer coverage. You see how wet that's getting? Mm -hmm. As opposed to just mincing it up. Okay, so we're gonna put this in a jar. And while we're doing this, uh, I'd love to hear from you guys what kind of salt you use at home and why. Um, and then also, if you are using iodized salt, um, that old school box or, or uh, jar of iodized salt, get rid of it. You don't have to throw it away, but um, I used some as weed killer the other day. Uh, I was tired of using Roundup, so I put uh, iodized salt, about 10 parts white vinegar, uh, one part iodized salt, one part dish soap, and sprayed that on the weeds outside, and it killed it. Um, so. So here's a question from Lindsay. What's a good light dressing if you don't like vinegar? Um, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna do a, uh, a lemon vinaigrette. You know, other ways of, of adding tang to a dressing if you don't like citrus or if you don't like vinegar, um, do buttermilk. Throw a little sour cream in. It'll give you some good tang. So the other thing we're gonna do here, we've got the, uh, the garlic paste and I'm adding the lemon juice. The salt and the garlic is gonna help draw out even more flavor. Um, you guys can just ignore the seeds in the, in the jar here. <laughs> it's gonna help draw out more flavor. And so this will sit here and macerate for a couple minutes and it's gonna bring more flavor into the vinaigrette. The thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add a little bit of mustard for a little bit of flavor and this is also gonna help emulsify it, which means it's gonna help make it creamy. So salt. Garlic, Dijon mustard, pretty basic. I'm gonna let this hang out and then I'm gonna add uh, olive oil to it. So it'll be uh, one part lemon juice to three parts olive oil and then salt to taste. Okay, so we've seasoned steak, we showed how to do that. Next thing we're gonna do is show how salt breaks down um, food while it's cooking. So I've got an induction burner here. Get this going. Heat it up. Get some olive oil going. And while the olive oil is heating up, we're gonna chop an onion. Is this your favorite way to chop an onion you're about to show us? Favorite way? It's the <laughs> only way. <laughs> Yeah, do this enough times, it becomes, uh, becomes your go-to. Have you ever timed yourself? Uh, I have never timed myself, and I do not want to be a part of the, uh, the <laughs> onion chopping challenge, but um, if we were to time it, I would slice it and not, uh, not dice it. Okay. Horizontal cuts. How do you avoid crying? Uh, wear contact lenses. When I'm wearing glasses, definitely get some tears. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can put your face in the freezer. I don't know if you've ever tried that. Uh, but I don't think there's any way to really do it. So, just a simple chop. And I always cheat and come here and hit the nubs. Jennifer said she sticks her head in the fridge too. A like-minded soul. Mm -hmm. Okay, olive oil is heated up and we're gonna take our onions and we're gonna start sauteing. And I'm gonna show you why uh, we season our onions from the get-go. Okay, so more kosher salt here. And what this is gonna do is, not only is it gonna flavor the onions and create a basic flavor, but the salt can help break down the cell walls they're going to cook faster. Speaking of frying, <laughs> it's wrong. Um, it's going to make the onions cook faster than if I hadn't added salt. And then, you know, when I talked about before, and if you just joined us today, we're uh, talking about seasoning with salt. This is the most basic and fundamental important thing you need to learn in your home kitchen. How so, hot is that pan? This is uh, medium high. So, the drill with this is that when we're making a, uh, a saute dish, we're making a sauce, you want to build flavor. Uh, and it's important not to just salt at the beginning or salt at the end. Um, you know, home cooks who, who have been cooking for a long time know that you add a little bit of salt in the beginning, 
add a little bit of salt as you go, and then finish with salt uh, to elevate the flavor. So these are starting to soften, and the salt's really helping to break them down. Super basic, but this is gonna be the key to, uh, to going from ho-hum flavor to a, to a bigger, uh, more elevated flavor. All right, so that's the second way that, uh, that we're gonna talk about salt today. Uh, the next way is we're going to get into the second salt, the second and third salt that you need to have in your home kitchen. So the second one is gray sea salt, um, and the third one is Florida cell. So Florida cell is a flower of the sea. Uh, that's this white one here. Um, in France and in Spain, when you are harvesting the, the salt from the salt beds, you take the Florida cell off the top. Um, this is the, the most pure of the salt. And then underneath that is the gray salt, and this has a little bit more of a mineral quality and a mineral flavor. Um, that's, that's what gives it the gray character. And you can see how chunky that is. Um, and we're gonna use that, that uh, coarse chunky salt to good effect. So did we get any responses from people about what kind of salt they have in their kitchen? Someone said Malzahn. Yeah, so we're going to talk about that one too. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do before we do the, uh, the tomatoes is we're going to sear the steak and we're going to show how to use salt a second way with that. Somebody asked earlier that if you salt before, they heard that it toughens the meat. That's actually not true. Uh, one of the best things you can do uh, for almost any pre uh, protein is to pre-season it. So for steak, um, I'm going to pull it out of the fridge at least an hour before I cook it. And I'm going to go ahead and salt it ahead of time. It's going to allow the steak to uh, penetrate the surfaces of the meat, um, help draw out a little bit of moisture. If you pat that dry, you'll get a better brown crust, but you also get deeper flavor. So I would do the same thing for fish, maybe 30 minutes before you're about to cook, 20 minutes before you're about to cook, pre-season that. Um, think about a pork chop. If you, sit, if you salt that pork chop overnight uh, and let it hang out in the fridge uncovered, it's going to taste infinitely better the next day when you sear it or grill it than if you're seasoning it right ahead. Um, same goes with chicken. I would definitely recommend pre-seasoning um, and that will also elevate the flavor. So steak's cooking. Uh, I want to show you how we're going to use crunchier finishing salts. Alright guys, so I've got some really crappy tomatoes because it's April and it's April. Um, <laughs> This is more of a uh, the kind of thing that you would do in the summertime when tomatoes are at their peak. So you got folks coming over in about 30 minutes and uh, you've got some steak that you want to serve, you want to make a tomato salad. Um, this is super, super simple and you should be using really good tomatoes. Um, so when they're that peak season they're popping. You just want to season them about 30 minutes ahead of time. You could do that with gray salt, uh, gray sea salt or Florida cell. Um, today we're going to do that with the Florida cell to season them. And again, just like the garlic and the onions that we showed earlier, the salt can help pull out the juices. It's going to penetrate the tomatoes and make them taste better. And look, I know this is super basic and some of you are probably saying duh um, in the commentary, but this is what separates a good tomato from a great tomato. And that's how and when to salt it. So we're gonna let that hang out. Um, you know what, throw a little avocado in there too. So would you say salt over marinade? Or different techniques? You know what, I would. I mean, I, I use a marinade for particular things, but Rebecca, you and I have talked about it. Uh, if you get really, really good protein, if you get really good fish, really good um, steak, or if you're using vegetables and you get some really high quality, um, to me, salt, pepper, chili flakes, lemon juice, olive oil, um, they'll do the trick. So, marinades for me are more, more about um, breaking down the texture of the meat. Let me see what you're doing with that avocado there. So, yeah, just slicing them up. And then summertime too, I mean, yeah, we definitely marinate chicken at, uh, at home, but um, most of the time it's just, just very simple salt and pepper. 
long as your fresh are really good. So this is a hanger steak. You guys uh, see this at the butcher, you should grab it. This is what the butchers are taking home. Um, the way it comes is usually, um, there's a seam that separates these two steaks. Uh, you can ask the butcher to separate them for you or you can do it at home, just follow the seam. But uh, it's really, really rich, it's got really beefy flavor and, um, and it's, it's got a lot of iron to it. Uh, and you can almost taste that iron. Okay, so we're gonna throw some avocados on the salad. Tomatoes have been salted. Cleaned up here. And um, some lime juice to keep those from browning. Do you always need to use a cast iron with the hanger? Yeah, you know what I'll do is, um, unless I've got a really, really hot grill and I'm cooking the charcoal um, for my gas grill, I'll take the cast iron and I'll put it directly on the grill and heat it up for about 15 minutes to get it ripping hot uh, and cook the steak or cook burger directly in that and that's what's going to give you a better crust. Uh, that and seasoning it well. I'll do that with fish too, it's a great way to cook fish um, so it won't stick instead of having to, to uh, put it directly on the grill grate, put it in the cast iron, and you're gonna get great flavor. You'll get even cooking and a great crust. Okay, so, a little more salt on this avocado. All right, getting back to the vinaigrette, the lemon juice and the garlic and uh, mustard, macerated for a bit. The salt has helped pull out some of that garlic flavor. And we're gonna add a little olive oil, one part lemon juice. Today, uh, I'm gonna do three parts, we'll do about two parts of olive oil. Uh, my buddy's joking me, everything in my kitchen is in jars, including this dressing, um, old jam jar. Shake it up, this will keep in the fridge for like a week. Um, this would be good on that tomato salad, or be good as a sauce for the steak, chicken, um, any kind of salad. But uh, it's a good way to take the salt. Okay. Last thing, another way to use a, a finishing salt. So we put a little bit of salt on our steak. In the beginning, flavor it. I'm sure a lot of you have this at home, all done. This is a different kind of sea salt. Uh, what makes this different is the crystal structure. It's almost like a pyramid, and I'm going to show you. So, Maldon is one of the ultimate finishing salts, just like Fleur de Sel, just like the, the gray salt. You can see some of these crystals. Um, they're really pyramid in shape that's coming through on the screen. Um, Maldon is, is the ultimate finishing salt. And so, you've got your steak. Let's pretend it's rested for like five minutes. Uh, super juicy. Before you take it to the table, uh, before you slice it, just finish a few country bits of the salt on top. These are going to add little explosions of flavor on top of the beef. This also works well with the gray salt of the Florida cell, uh, and the moisture in the salt will help adhere to the surface too. Okay, so that's the dill, that's the drill. Um, different kinds of salts, three kinds you need in your kitchen. You want kosher salt, diamond crystal for every day. Important for uh, scouring surfaces like cast iron. So that's what, how I would clean this pan here um, with the diamond crystal. I'm sorry, with the Morton. Uh, we've got gray sea salt, uh, which is really minerally. We use it as a finishing salt. This one's really coarse. We've got Florida Cell, um, which is very pure. Uh, and it's the flower of the sea. It's, it's super high end, it makes a great gift. I use Florida Cell on uh, summer tomatoes, on avocado. It's got a bit of crunch um, and some texture and character to it and uh, a really, really pure flavor. And then we use these kind of finishing salts, the gray salt, the Fleur de Sel, or a Maldon, a different kind of sea salt um, to finish steak. And that's Salt 101. And uh, if you don't know how to season, learning how to season will be the most important thing to learn in the home kitchen. So thanks for joining us, folks.